The moment has finally arrived. We're entering a new era here at Sole Deo Gloria in which we're now finally doing videos, something I promised a while ago and has taken a little bit more time. In today's video, I hope you'll join me as we take a look at Nancy Lee Damas Wolgamuth's latest book, written with her husband Robert, You Can Trust God to Write Your Story. So sit back, take a few moments, and be introduced to a new book. Well, greetings to all you Soli Deo Gloria followers. First off, let me begin just by simply thanking you for being here. Thank you for following this blog, and I pray and trust that you've been continuously encouraged by it and that God has been glorified. I'm excited today as we finally release the very first video, something that I indicated I would do a long time ago, and then after some computer problems had to delay so I'm looking forward to today. Certainly I am not an expert in this field. You're going to find mistakes. Uh, but as time goes on, I trust that I will get better at it. It will be a more seamless experience for you. And that, as always, that God gets the glory. Um, so I look forward today specifically to share with you a book by Nancy Lee DeMoss Wolgamuth and her husband, Robert Wolgamuth, You Can Trust God to Write Your Story. It is a book released by Moody Publishers based out of the Chicago area. Um, very well known publisher and has basically books across the spectrum. If you don't know Nancy Lee DeMoss and her husband Robert, they've been around for quite some time. And Robert Wolgamuth was involved in the publishing industry for quite some time. They have quite the story. And if you have time or haven't heard the story, I would urge you to take some time to just research it and look it up. In fact, I know there's a well-known video out there, and if I can find it, I'll put it in the links below and you can enjoy that. But it's a beautiful story of how God took this man who was widowed and then took a woman who had been single all her life and brought them together. And what's striking about the video is the way in which they honor God throughout it. And so it's an enjoyable story to see how God is at work in the world around us. Certainly, that is what you will find in the book that they've chosen to co-author together. Allow, you can allow God to write your story is an easy read, and it is a book about God's stories. Really, it's, I guess, a book about people's stories, but how God has written them for them. And many of these stories are difficult stories in which you see a wonderful outcome, and then there are some in which God is still at work. But regardless, it is a book that most will find encouraging because it's a book that they can relate to. They can find their own story in the midst of what other people are going through. And so it's a book that looks at how God interacts and is sovereign over all things. It creates trust in who he is and his continuous work both in praising him for the wonderful things he is doing, those encouraging times, those joyful times, but also in the midst of those difficult trials, which we know will come because James tells us that in James chapter 1. We see that in the book of First Peter as well. So those trials aren't a surprise, and the author simply used those as opportunities to once again point to God. In that regard, this book is an excellent book to be, remember who he is. Because sometimes we have that tendency to look the other way or to forget that really he is with us at every single moment. And so the authors do well at simply accomplishing their goal of sharing stories so that you may be encouraged that God is part of yours. What you'll find in this book is really a book of testimonies. There is some elaboration, not a lot of heavy doctrine or theology. Certainly there's some because that impacts everything that we do. But instead, it's an elaboration of many, many stories in combination with a little bit of commentary about how God is at work. 
And yet that is what God, what the authors use to encourage you in your relationship with God. One of the things I personally appreciated is the way in which the authors found joy in the little things. They would go for a walk together and they would talk about a flower and God's creation, something so simplistic, or even think about the silence and appreciating that. And if there's a takeaway there is that we, fellow believers, should be encouraged and find joy in those things as well. Perhaps the greatest disappointment for me was it lacked the depth. I had high expectations of, these, of this book, maybe too high, in that I've read books by both authors independently before. I find them to be great authors, solid people, and I'm always learning from the, their ministries, whether it be their books or their blogs, whatever it may be. They're excellent people. And so I was expecting a lot more profundity. And it, this book doesn't have it as much. I'm not saying that it's not a good book for that, for not having it, and that you should avoid it. Quite the contrary, it's still a very good book, and many people find great value in it. For me, I was hoping for more. Perhaps the only major concern I have is some of the, some of the quotes that they use. Um, in particular, for example, one of those quotes is by Tony Evans, who can be very hit or miss. But the book or the quote that they use, at least where I found that quote, was in a book called Kingdom Prayer. That book borders very much on prosperity gospel theology. It doesn't always quite cross the line, but he very much toes that line, very close. And while the quote itself is not so awful. In fact, it brings clarity to some certain principles. The fact that they're quoting that book and that author I find concerning. Later on, they quote another author who is actually very solid, but the quote that they use from her is one that I myself have critiqued and find very concerning. Minor points, you can read through those as you read through the book and just be discerning. Um, there's no need to avoid the book simply because of that. I just wish that they had personally avoided some of that cross-contamination, for lack of a better word. And so overall, this was a great book. It's an easy book to read. I suspect most would be very much encouraged by it. I suspect that they'd be drawn to God and drawn closer to God, which is, of course, a very good thing. Because we want to see people, as they read, develop their relationship with our Lord. And so I think that's what you'll see here. <clears throat> in that regard, for most people, I would recommend if you want just a simple light read that you be encouraged in seeing how God has worked in other people's lives, pick it up. Take the time to read it. You can read through it, I suspect, very fast, um, and it won't take or occupy a lot of your time. One of my favorite things to do here at Soli Deo Gloria is pair every book with a specific coffee or tea. And so with this book, the one that I would pair it with is from a company called Serene Teas. They make primarily loose leaf teas and they have one blend called Serene. It's a blend of chamomile and other different herbs and it's just very calm and mild. It's a good, good cup to have and, and simply reflect, which is very much what this book demands, <clears throat> that as you read, you simply reflect on who God is. And so the pairing I have here is Serene Tea from Serene Teas and Nancy Lee DeMoss Wolgamoth and Robert Wolgamoth's book, You Can Trust God to Write Your Story. And so thank you for joining me today here at Soli Deo Gloria. I pray you're encouraged. I trust you will have a blessed day and that you will walk in the way of the Lord.